So guys, today I'm going to be doing something potentially terrible, but ultimately I was sitting there one of these days uh, watching the Dutch Bushcraft Knife guys, and I really love that channel. I'll have a link to their uh, channel in the description below, but I found them testing a SE3 clone, and it's the SEMA. I'm sure many of you guys either know or own, of the, or own those knives, and uh, they were overall just breaking it and destroying it, kind of to essentially say just how terrible those knives were. And I'm not going to be making this video to uh, prove their point or to talk about like you know just how terrible those knives are or to try and justify the fake uh, but I have a real SD3 here and the the tests that they did in particular to break the SEMA or the SD3 clone uh, are actually things that you could do to probably break this SD3 in all reality I'm going to be showing that hopefully it doesn't break I really like this knife but if it does I just want to do this as more of an informative video or an informative response to the Dutch bushcraft knife guys and most importantly importantly to the potential consumers of SE3s because I don't want you guys to buy an SE3 thinking that the tip strength is going to be better or that you can do the things that you saw in their video uh, to an SE3 and it not break. Uh, I guess the only advantage to the SE3 would be that this has a better warranty so if you do break the SE3 you can just send it back but uh, you know, if you're in a survival situation, you know, that's all fine and great and dandy if you can get back to the world. But, you know, if you're out in the sticks or in a survival situation, you know, it doesn't really matter if you can send it back for absolutely nothing. You know, you're still screwed. So, I just wanted to do this video to talk about this and actually prove to myself I've been very curious just to see the tip strength of the SE3. Now, hopefully you guys can see here, this knife is not the thickest knife. And I think actually the SEMA is thicker, but today we're going to be testing it and hopefully it survives. I really like I said, I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but knowing full tangs, I feel like this is going to probably, or not full tangs, but full flat grinds, this is probably not going to end well. In addition, the, I'm going to be replicating the two tests that the Dutch Bushcraft Knife guys did. And the first one was just overall tip strength. Now I have a piece of hickory here, so I don't know, they didn't go out and say what they used, but I'm just using this block of hickory to just do stab tests like this, like that. And I'm then, if it passes or if it breaks, whatever happens, I'm gonna do like 20 of them. And then I'm going to drive it into this log that you see here sideways like this and then stand on the tip. So far, that's actually pretty impressive. But any, anyways, guys, without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I do want to note here is that this is very uncomfortable to do, but I am actually extremely impressed by that. It is wearing off the coating rapidly, but uh, very, very impressed at this. Uh, this is very, very impressive. And once again, this is hickory, so this is not some cheap wood uh, to do this. Hopefully you guys can hear just how hard I am. I'm not, I'm not trying to like baby stab this and pry. I am going all at it because I really am curious just to see just how strong this knife is. <sighs> Wish I would have chosen something bigger. <laughs> So I do think if I really actually slam on this, wow, actually I did that pretty well. But I think if I were to fully have slammed on that with like a hammer, it might have snapped. But all in all, I'm actually super impressed at this. And maybe I have to eat my words here actually, uh, because it is just tearing this block of hickory up. Yeah, so it is actually doing really, really well with that. I have to say, you guys can just see how chewed up this piece of hickory is. Uh, it is really surviving it. Just to uh, do some quick tests into this one. Yeah, it's doing really well. 
so actually there is a slight tweak and I think I'm going to try and do a close up on this there is a slight tweak in the tip uh, that's actually not anything I couldn't undo but actually that's pretty impressive but we're not over yet here because they didn't just do this they actually stood on it so see there hopefully I'll try and put my hand behind this maybe <laughs> hopefully you guys can see there I can't really see it in the viewfinder but there is a slight tweak to the tip and that I'm not completely surprised about I'm actually more surprised at the fact that this hasn't already snapped yet and yeah just by reversing what I've done I can actually bend it back straight so if I just reverse what I did to it on the other side, I'm actually bending it back straight. But I'm actually extraordinarily surprised that this is a very, very uh, tiny full flat grind on here. And it's actually holding up to that amount of abuse, abuse very, very well. So far, it actually has only a slight amount of tip damage with all of that, but once again, that is not the end of this test because the Dutch Bushcraft Knife guys, they took it just a little bit further and they actually drove the knife into the side of a tree like such and stood on it. And so just to make sure that this SC can take that, we're also going to be doing the same exact thing. Now that is the particular part of the test that I'm very curious about this SC3 holding up to because if it's going to break at any point, it's probably going to be that. Oh, now that I have the knife right over there, you guys can see, there's the tarp slash tent. So I'm going to drive this in just a little bit further than it currently is right now, and then I'm going to see how it supports my weight. So like I said, this is probably, if it's going to fail at all, this is the most likely test it's going to fail at. So I'm not giving it a whole lot, because once again, this is a tip strength test. If I just hammered it halfway in, it really wouldn't be that much. So now let's see how well it takes it. Ooh. That was very interesting. <laughs> I apologize, I was not able to really do much, but already I can tell you that that would snap because you guys can see just how much bend there is there. <clears throat> So there you guys go. <clears throat> so that is it. It actually really holds, held up to that quite nicely. Now I think you guys can finally see that this thing is quite bent. And uh, I'm actually really impressed by that. I was not expecting a knife of this size to actually be able to hold up to all of that. And of course it is not rigged. By the way, I'm just going to straighten this thing back out. Because this thing, you can definitely do that with. Just by a few things, I was able to pretty much straighten it right back out. Hopefully you guys saw how bad it was, but that actually really, really thoroughly surprised me. I was not expecting this knife to be able to bend that much. And so, in conclusion, the Dutch Bushcraft Knife guys are absolutely correct. Without having test, tested an SE3, they were absolutely correct. This 1095 has been heat treated well enough to the fact that it bends without breaking and I really like I said I have to say I'm genuinely surprised at a knife that's this thin I mean this thing is right around a tenth of an inch thick and it was able to be stood upon and of course like I said it did bend right out uh, that's what was happening was I was driving it into these logs or into this log and you could just see that the moment you started to put pressure on it it just bent uh, and that's really great because while a bent knife isn't super great I'd rather have a bent knife as opposed to a broken knife because a broken knife is a piece of a knife that you can no longer use. Whereas if it's bent, while you may have to, uh, you know, increase your technique uh, or use a special technique, at least you can still use that part of the blade. Or heck, you might just make a new type of blade. So that's very, very impressive for me. I honestly have to say, I am actually quite, quite impressed by how this SE3 held up. I was really genuinely not expecting it to hold up that well, and it really did very, very well.
So, anyways, guys, don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and tell me what your thoughts are on the SC. And uh, do you guys want to see a retest of this fat error in the summer when I can do even harder things to it? Uh, would you guys like to see a part two to this test? But so far for me, that is a lot of hardcore test. And really, in fact, I think I'm now going to use this knife as a testament to tip strength. Because I'm here to tell you, like I said, I'm going to do a close-up here on this tip. So this is the tip. Now, of course, I did straighten it back out. I bent it because when I uh, put my full weight on it, or at least some of my weight, I couldn't really put my full weight on it. But when I put my weight on it, it bent right about here. And it really started to get really bent. Um, but of course, I bent itself back out. And hopefully you guys can see there's a little bit of paint off the tip of this removed. Uh, because those were hardcore tip strength tests. And uh, once again, the tip, even right here, is just slightly tweaked right now. But overall, it's nothing that I couldn't stab into that piece of hickory and get fixed. <laughs> so... Anyways, guys, you know, you can just see this is my hand in comparison to that tip, you know, and I have about a medium-sized hand. My hands are definitely not chunky at all, and so you can see just how thin this knife is, but yet it was able to take all of that abuse and still more with only bending and not breaking, and this is pretty impressive because I've seen quite a few excuses from other YouTubers about their knives that have uh, tips that have broken off, and they're like, you know, well, I would never use my knife like this, and I've never used the SC like this. I was just very curious to see how it would hold up, and the SC's tip didn't break, and it was made out of 1095, just like some other knives I've seen that had tips break. So, <clears throat> in my opinion, this this is a standard that should be measured off of when we come to tip strength as far as knives go. Uh, so anyways guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that extremely interesting test results. And uh, let me know if you want to see a part two of this. And don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe. And tell me what your thoughts are on this tip. Do you, are you guys surprised? Are you guys not surprised? Uh, do you think what I did was hardcore or not hardcore enough? Anyways guys, that's it for now and I'm out.